so good morning good afternoon good evening to everyone here i am going to discuss the basics of molecular docking first of all because we are going to do a hands on training some people may be from uh, ug graduate pg graduates some may know about what is the docking some may not be knowing about the docking so i'm just going to give the a small introduction about what is the uh, need for doing docking those things and all so first of all we have to know what is a drug the term drug means any particle intended for the use in diagnosis cure mitigation treatment or prevention of a disease in a man or other animals so it uh, just uh, drug is uh, any chemical or biological substance either it may be synthetic or non synthetic in nature so this is said to be a drug because we are uh, we are into the drug discovery process so we have to know what is a drug so why are new drugs needed so even though we are having n number of drugs in the market every day day by day all the companies involved in finding new new drugs so we have to know why what are the reasons behind finding a new drugs so first reason is unmet medical need so we couldn't able to meet the medical need because day by day we are getting new disease as of now we are in a covid situation so we have to find a drug for this disease and some to the some disease low efficacy like example the diseases uh, like a dementia or cancer those diseases if you take out for them the treatment is not up to the mark so we need more eff efficient drugs to treat and and the next reason is side effects if you take any drug it will show side effects only completely uh, any drug any uh, allopathic medicine if you see in the leaflet they might have given side effects so to overcome side effects to reduce the side effects we are we are into the drug discovery so downstream health cost like alzheimer's spinal injury so for those diseases we have to work out for new drugs and cost of the therapy if you take the interleukins for a patient with a cancer so we can't have uh, the a poor people can't afford the price of the um, price uh, cost of the therapy and to the major reason is sustain industrial activity because if you make a drug if you invent a drug the patent will get expired if once it is expired the companies can't make out the money so they have to work out for new disease uh, for new drugs so because people working in the pharmaceutical sector they need money no and the last one is the drug resistance so drug resistance we might know about the antimicrobial drug resistance because yesterday uh, our friend thirumal have discussed a lot about the mutation so due to mutations and other reasons drug will get uh, resisted so what are the drug you are taking it won't produces any efficient therapy so we have to find a new drug for those kind of diseases so these are the reasons why we need a new drug and the source of the drug if you take the sources are from either from plant sources because we are we got n number of good medicines from the plant sources from the animal sources from the synthetic from the marine sources from the biotechnology product like uh, insulins so these are the things which we are utilizing to find out a new drugs so we are entering to the cad why we have to enter? what is the cad so if you take the cad competition it's a, either to be a computational chemistry or else cad is the chemistry whose major goals are to create efficient mathematical approximations and computer programs that calculate the properties of future drug molecules and thus helping in the process of drug design and discovery so cad is nothing but it's a mathematical equation with the help of programming we are going to predict what are the properties it's having whether this chemical constituent this chemical substance will be used for as a drug molecule or not so this is the process so this process will help in the drug design and discovery that is said to be a cad so what is the need for cad so yesterday our friend uh, dr muriyasan sir have discussed enormously so the drug discovery process this many years it will take that many years it will take this much amount of money has been utilized so lot of things have been involved so what is the role of cad also we have discussed and then here also have one point i want to note down so drug discovery today are facing a serious challenge because of increased cost and enormous amount of time taken so the major goal of a drug discovery or else computational aided drug design or molecular modeling what are the computational uh, tools we are using in the drug discovery will be helpful in reducing the time as well as the reduce the cost it will be 
reduce the amount which we are which they are investing so that is a major reason and also because of rigorous competition among us the different pharmaceutical companies you may feel why companies are getting a uh, competitor the re major reason is they want to find out a new drug which should, should be of monopoly then only they can earn their profit that is the major reason why cad so uh, we are go into the hands on workshop so first thing is molecular docking so we have to know what is a docking so docking dock means molecular docking in the sense simple term i will say how effectively a drug binds to the receptor how effectively a drug binds to the receptor this is a db docking so molecular docking here docking is the identification of the low energy binding modes of a small molecule or ligand within the active site of a macromolecule or receptor whose structure is known so we have to find out the how it will get binded so docking is the computational determination of binding affinity between molecules that is protein structure and ligand or else protein protein also can be included so given a protein and ligand find out the binding free energy of the complex formed by docking them so here you can able to see the ligand and receptor how it will get binded so based on this you can able to see the ligand here is the receptor so ligand receptor complex how how it get binded and how it's giving this code so based on that it will work out so why modeling we may know molecular docking is different and modeling is different modeling in the sense we are creating a structure creating a, a, a content so experimental determination of structure is still a time consuming and expensive process so we have to enter into modeling process point number 1 and the second is number of known sequences are more than the number of known structures known sequences the protein sequences you know but we don't know the protein structure or receptor structure we don't know those things and then the structure information is essential in understanding the function so if you know the protein structure either it's a beta sheet or a helical sheet alpha sheet or how it is whether it is a primary structure or how how it looks where is the twist and turns are there so based on that we can able to find out the we can understand the function of a particular protein that is the major reason behind doing the modeling studies so uh, some people uh, many places we, be, we people will be seeing so what is the term in silico drug designing in silico so usually what we'll use as a pharmacological term for evaluating a drug if you are doing outside the body will be saying as in vitro inside the body in vivo so the term in silico in the sense we are using the system and we are working to find out whether the drug will be we are evaluating the drug whether it will be potent or it won't produces any pharmacological action so for that we are using the term called as in silico because it is based on the, the computers are based on the silicon board the computers are connected to the silicon connections that's why it is said to be in silico studies so in silico drug designing so in silico is an expression used to me performed on computer or via computer simulation sir sir hello sir ah, sir can you hear hello sir can you hear सर नाउ इट इज अडेबल Sir, is it audible?
सर टीपी के सर सर इज इट ऑडिबल नाउ इट्स ऑडिबल सर So from this slide, is it audible? Yeah, yeah, it's audible. Audible, go ahead. No, from this slide or a previous slide? Previous slide, previous slide. Molecular dagi is over, right? Yeah, yeah, over, over. You can go ahead, sir. No problem. Okay, fine. So here, I'll be explaining back with the term why modeling. so experimental determination of a structure is still a time consuming and expensive process if you do a study in a lab it will take time to predict what type of a structure how it will it got arranged so those things will be a thing and then second one is the number of known sequences are more than the number of known structures we have n number of sequences known sequences but we don't have the proper structure for that so modeling is required and then the structural information of a particular protein or particular receptor is required because that is the major reason based on that one we can able to design a drug where are, where is the fold where where it get uh, twisted and turned uh, what type of uh, sheet it is having alpha sheet or beta sheet what type of those things based on that one we can design a drug so modeling is required modeling of a protein is required so in silico designing so in silico uh, the term in silico in the sense we usually we will be using a uh, technical terms in evaluating a drug as a pharmacological technical term in vitro and in vivo in vitro in the sense outside the body testing any molecule outside the body said to be in vitro testing any molecule inside the body said to be a in vivo so the same way we are going to test a molecule or we are going to evaluate a molecule whether it will be working on a particular receptor or particular protein so to predict those things we are working on that so for that we are using a technical term called as in silico evaluation in silico pharmacological evaluation or in silico studies because the uh, we are using the system the systems are made up of silicon connections so that's why it is said to be in silico it is worked on a silicon connections so in silico is an expression used to mean performed on computer or via computer simulation that is a term in silico means in silico drug designing is defined as the identification of a drug target molecule by employing bioinformatics tool so bioinformatics tool or there are n number of tools it is like an ocean from uh, prote uh, proteomics genomics uh, ngs technology so it, it it involve n number of tools n number of processes are there it can't be explained in a single slide so based on those by employing bioinformatics tools if you find a drug molecule it is said to be a in silico drug design so here we are going to see what type of dockings are available Ta types of dockings so you, we said we are going to bind we are going to check the binding affinity how it get binded so there are two types of bind uh, docking one is rigid docking another one is a flexible docking so what is the difference rigid docking means both the ligand and protein will be more kept as a rigid one strong one so nothing will move out nothing will change example a lock and key model in a biochemistry we have seen a technical term lock and key so for the particular lock particular key only will work out the same way the rigid docking only if it suits it will go and bind with the, their geometry and then they will they will produce the required binding affinity so based on that only it will work out so next one is flexible docking in that is induced fit docking and enumeration on the rotation of one of the molecule usually the smaller one is performed every rotation the energy is calculated later the most optimum force is selected so flexible docking will be will keep uh, it can be freely rotatable so based on that rotation it can rotate and it will give different sort of scores so based on the scores we will rank them and we will find out which is the best so types of in silico drug design so here we have seen the types of docking so types of designing is there different two types of designing is there one is ligand based drug design another one is a structure based drug design so if you take the uh, ligand based uh, structure based or receptor based so 
this is completely based on the So uses a 3D structure of a target receptor to search for a potential candidate compound that can modulate the target function. So here, what we'll know, we, we, will, we will know the particular protein or particular receptor which is responsible for causing a particular disease. So by knowing the structures of a particular protein, we, if you are designing a drug, that it will involve in the receptor based or structure based. So this involves the molecular docking of each compound in the chemical database into the binding site of a particular target and predicting the electrostatic fit between them. The compounds are ranked using an appropriate scoring function such as the score correlated with the binding energy. Receptor-based methods have been successfully applied in many targets. So here the receptor-based in the sense, as people have been finding a new disease. So they will be finding what is the reason, what is the pathology behind it. And once they found out which, which protein or which receptor is responsible, by knowing their structure, we can able to predict which is the active site. Based on their active site, based on their geometry, based on their complementary sites, if you are designing a drug, it will, it will come under the category of receptor-based or structure-based drug design. So the next one is ligand-based strategy. So if you don't know this, uh, uh, particular uh, receptor which where my designed drug or designed molecule work out. So then you will fall into the category of ligand based drug design or uh, ligand based strategy. So here you may have designed a few molecules. So example based on their nucleus, uh, ciproflaxacin, norflaxacin, this belongs to the quinol derivative. So those drugs are used as an antibacterial agent. So if you're, so if you're designing a drug based on that, uh, based on that, Nucleus that is quinazolin or quinolin, what are the nucleus it be having? So you can try for the particular disease which already have been marketed or which already have been uh, tested. So those kind of drugs will fall into the category of ligand based strategy. So here structures similar to the known inhibitors are identified from chemical databases by variety of methods. As yesterday, our friend uh, Krishnamurti sir have explained me about the n number of databases that zinc databases, Campbell databases, or many other databases he have explained. So from those databases, you can able to select only the substructure set and you can try for a particular target. So for, for such kind of things you can do. And here this will involve the pharmacophore matching or 3D shape matching. So numerous successful applications of ligand based methods have been reported. So we are saying it's binding, it's binding, it's binding. We have to know what is the mechanism behind their binding, why it's getting binded, what are the reasons, how it will get binded. So what are the complementers between the ligand and the binding site? The steric complementers, that is the shape of the ligand is mirrored in the shape of the binding site. So it's like, a, as I said, lock and key, it should have a connectivity. Here one side, if it is a hydrogen bond donor, another side, it should be an acceptor. If I give, you have to take. So based on their complementaries, it will bind. And then based on their physiochemical complementaries, what type of solution it is, what is the pK value, those things, and it, it, it will go in depth. So these are the basic things, complementaries, steric complementaries, and physiochemical complementaries are the reason behind the basic binding mechanism. So now we have seen the types of docking, types of insulin drug design. Now we are going to the categories of docking, what type of different categories of docking we have. So Two types we can see. One is protein-protein docking, another one is protein ligand docking. What is the protein-protein docking? So here the both the thing, uh, bo bo both the nucleus will be a protein only. Both molecules are rigid in nature. Both are proteins only. And the interaction produces no change in their conformation. It won't get changed. It won't get pro it won't produce any change. So protein ligand. So almost uh, many of the scientists are, many of the researchers are working on protein ligand docking only. If you take any small molecule of any small chemicals uh, libraries, any type of chemical drugs. So those drugs which will bind with, uh, which they will try to bind with a particular protein that will fall in the category of protein ligand docking. Ligand is flexible because it has a 3D structure and the sh uh, shape there are, substituent their functional group can be rotated the rotatable bonds will be there so it will be rotated and interaction this interaction what it will do it will produces a conformational changes in the ligand 
So these are the two categories where we can able to uh, where we can categorize the type of docking. So protein protein docking here you can able to see. So here you can able to see a structure. These two are proteins in nature. So here both have binded. That's all based on their complementary sites. It will go and bind, but it have never produced any changes in their shape. So computational modeling of a quaternary structure of a complex is found by two or more interacting biological macromolecules. Protein protein complexes are the most commonly attempted target for such as modeling, followed by protein nucleic acid. And the next one is protein ligand docking. So protein ligand docking is, a, is to predict the position and orientation of a ligand, a small molecule when it is bound to a protein a receptor or an enzyme. So here you can able to see the So the protein and here how it got binded the ligand and how it got binded so the those things you can able to see this this is all about the protein ligand docking so what are docking and scoring we are saying you know after binding it will show some score 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 and what basis the scoring is bit takes place to place a ligand that is a small molecule into the binding site of a receptor in the manner as appropriate for optimal interactions with the receptor. And then to evaluate the ligand receptor interaction in a way that may discriminate experimentally absorbed mode from others and estimate the binding energy. So this is the nature. So here you can able to see. Here you can able to see here, uh, this is a ligand, this is a receptor. So once you do the docking, what it will do, it will try with the different poses, different number of poses. Uh, because as we uh, said, no ligand will be in a flexible rotating mode. So this will completely it will rotate, 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 and then it will give different scoring. So based on that scoring, which which is having more energy, highest energy, it will work out. It will be ranked. So components of docking. So what are the components of docking? One is the typically protein ligand uh, software consists of two main components with which will work together. One is search algorithm, another one is scoring function. Search algorithm in the sense, it will generate a large number of poses of a molecule in the binding site. In a binding site, how it will go and sit? As we are changing, uh, it will change, it will rotate, it will try to rotate, it will try to change the shape rotation. So based on that, it will produce different number of poses and based on the different poses, it will produce different scores. So scoring function, which will calculate a score or binding affinity. So we previously here in search algorithm, it has produced a different poses. So different poses will produce different binding energy. So those binding energy will be ordered or ranked according to them. So it calculates a score or binding energy for a particular pose. The binding affinity or a score representing the strength of binding. Based on the score only, we are saying whether the drug have binded properly or not, strongly or not. So as we said, scoring, scoring, scoring. The scoring will be based on the how both it get interacted, on what basis it get interacted. Either it is by hydrogen bonding interaction or else hydrophobic interaction or else electrostatic interaction or else van der Waals interaction or else pi pi stacking or what are the basis. Based on these scores, they will, they will produce the binding affinity, binding scores. 
So the binding affinity and the binding score, we said, no, it will be in negative. It will be higher than negative, more efficiency, because these values will get arranged in an equation called a Schrodinger's wave equation. It is said to be a wave equation. So based on that wave equation score, wave, wave equation, the values will get substituted, and then we are getting the final result of like minus 8, minus 9, minus 10, or else minus 3, minus 4, What are the thing. Whichever the software you take, most probably every every software will give you the results in negative, in negative only. So based on the negativity, higher the negativity, more binding efficiency. So the scores come from the hydrogen bond interaction between the protein and the ligand, electrostatic, van der Waals, hydrophobic, and pi pi interaction. And other than the small, small things also will uh, call it like columbic force, dipole, dipole moment, what are the things there? So based on them, the scoring will be done and the value will be given. So here are some examples. So based on the computer drug business, which drugs have came into the market. So some examples I have shown here, dorozolamide, which is a carbonic anhydrous drug, second hour, which is a HIV protease inhibitor, Leniza, neuroimidase inhibitor, and discovery of Indinavir, which is a HIV protease inhibitor, and haloprotal as a lead compound in the structure-based design of a non-peptide inhibitor of HIV. So this example, why I call this, it's like a type of drug repurposed. So haloprotal is used for some other, uh, uh, it means it is used in the hypertension, it is used in for the other disease. But by use by doing a drug repurposing, they have tried for HIV in, uh, as a non-peptide HIV inhibitor. So this will give an idea why we have to do drug repurposing. So the conclusion point, so molecular docking give, give the promising effect on identification and optimization of a modern drug discovery. The combination of chemical information of a natural products with a docking based virtual screening will play an important role in drug discovery in the post genomic era as more and more new potential targets are emerging from the functional genomic studies. Example, recent example is uh, what we are, uh, whole world is facing, that is, that is COVID. For COVID, many researchers are working from the databases. So, a number of papers have been published based on the, and almost all the papers have been published based on the, 99% uh, based on the computer or drug design only. In that, most of the papers are from planned sources. So, planned sources, we have to explore more. So docking based virtual screening lead to much higher hit rate than traditional screening methods, that is high throughput screening. So high throughput screening, what we will do, we will take a thousand chemicals, what are the lab, uh, content we have in the lab, we will be trying to do, and we will be finding the same, whether it is producing activity or not. So to overcome that, we are using the virtual screening method. So docking method provides an opportunity for designing of active compounds. However, it has to be emphasized the docking based virtual screening is not the replacement of actual experimental screening. We have to very, be very clear. Only based on the docking score, we can't able to say this will be a potent drug. So this may be a potent drug only we can say because this we are using uh, in a wave function only. In an, but if you are trying to give a drug, it has to pass n number of chemical barriers or physical chemical barriers are that it should get absorbed, it should get distributed, it should get metabolized, then excreted. So based on those process only, it will work out. As a matter of fact, these two methods are highly complementary because based on the docking score or docking values, you can screen the compounds, you can filter out the compounds from 1000 molecules, you can get back to get to 10 molecules. So that 10 molecules, you can go to a wet lab and you can produce the results. So here we'll enter into the question and answer section. Sir, after this, you will take the hands on? Yeah, after some 10 minutes, if they have raised any questions, we'll have the questions. Yes, sir. We have a few questions. Awesome. Uh, someone has asked, can we know using docking that a ligand is an activator or inhibitor? That we can't say that we have to do a lab work only. Yeah. As yesterday itself, our uh, Professor Muriasen answered clearly. 
Mm -hmm. So based on this, you can't be able to say it's an agonist or antagonist. We can't say. Yes. Thank you. Next one is what is the best software for sketching of molecules and docking? Sketching of a molecules, we have uh, like a chem a chem draw is there, marine sketch is there, chem sketch is there, and number. Uh, and this chem sketch and marine sketch is free where where chem draw is a paid version. I feel it's from Cambridge University. Okay. And someone has asked, what is blind docking? Please discuss. Blind docking. So blind docking in the sense, if you know the active state of a protein, uh, a, a protein will be like a, some thousand chain, a thousand amino acids or two thousand amino acids will be bind uh, joined together. Out of that thousand or two thousand, some few amino acids like five to ten will be active. So if you hit on that active, the whole protein will become functionless. It it, it will get modified. So if you don't know that five or ten. If you are doing blindly, but blindly in the sense, whichever, wherever a drug can go and bind, that is said to be a blind docking. And someone has asked, what is the difference between active site and binding site? Are they synonymous or different? Yeah, both, both, both are synonyms only. Active sites and binding site. Active site and binding site, uh, we can have, how we can differentiate in the sense, as you asked uh, for a blind docking. Active site and active site is those amino acids which will be responsible for as a functioning body for the whole protein. But binding site in the sense, some may, some may have complement with the ligand. So they, those can also go and bind. That is different. This is different. Not synonyms. Okay. Someone has asked methodology for HTS. Maybe after autodoc, you can explain, I think. I yeah, HTS, uh, HTS couldn't get it. Come again, sir. Sorry, HTS. Protocol for HTS has asked. Same, Maybe. same, same. Oh. I see hydroprot screening. Uh, see, uh, docking, uh, we can able to say in a two ways. One is a sing, uh, one, one versus one. One ligand, one, oh. uh, one protein we are doing. That is quite common. HTS or EHTS, we will say. Oh. Or else VHTS, uh, virtual hydroprot screening. That is, if you, take a, if you take a library of commons, small library of commons, like 1,000 molecules, 2,000 molecules, what are the thing? The protocol, what we are following, the same protocol can, uh, can be utilized everywhere. But it will take time. It depends upon the system what we are using, what type of uh, 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 configuration we are having. Based on that, it will work out. And sir, someone is asking, mm -hmm. can we explain with an example, why do we need to perform protein-protein docking? Protein-protein docking, it, 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 it depends upon the uh, view of a scientist. Mm -hmm. So it, where it will work out in the sense for a peptide design. Yes. Peptide design only the amino acids which will go and have a complementary set. Though for those things, they will try for a protein protein docking. Next one, sir. Uh, uh, why, what does the negative sign of docking score indicate? Why it is always negative? As I said, no, it's based on the wave equation. Wave equation, they have framed a, yeah, equation. It's a mathematical modeling. Math, as we have said, in a computational uh, or computer drug business. Uh, Completely a complete, uh, mathematical and simulation. So mathematical equation, they are framed like that only. That is a wave equation. So for hydrogen bonding, they will have a constant. Hydrophobic, they have a constant. Based on those things only, it will be negative. It will be definitely negative only. So higher the negative, higher binding efficiency. Someone is asking uh, the role of bioinformatics in in silico study. Maybe whatever you are doing is bioinformatics. I think like everything is bioinformatics. Yeah. If you do, if you do, if you do any work on the system, it's not about particularly. Uh, we can say as a bioinformatics. Bioinformatics in the sense it's a broad terminology. It's yeah. broad. As I said, now it's a version. Yes. You can able to people are many are working in proteomics and genomics, NGS data analysis. That is different story. And here in drug design, some people are working drug development. Also, some people are working. So those who are using a system in silico for a designing a drug or development of a drug, all will fall under the same category called as bioinformaticians only. Okay. Sir, then most of the questions are related to Autodoc, Pyrex and all. Maybe after this, uh, uh, you are okay. hands on, maybe this can be cleared, I think, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we are going to run only Autodoc Pyrex only. Autodoc Vina in Pyrex. Why we are chosen the sense? Almost all the software which will run on a, a Linux platform. Many are not familiar as I'm not familiar with the Linux and I'm familiar with Windows only. So we we choose to work on the Windows platform. It will be easy to work out. So and we, you have asked for a protocol, all these things. Hope you, we are shared in the drive. Yes, yes, yes. We have shared everything in the drive yesterday itself. We have shared the protocol. We shared the list of servers, how to install everything we have shared. Oh. 
and even some of them are asking for videos and all so hope we are going yes. to kind of editing and all later we upload in the same platform yes yes sir okay. uh, uh, we will we will upload because we are uh, trimming the thing uh, content we will upload session by session session 1 session 2 session 3 like that we will upload soon we will upload within a couple of days Fine, sir. Maybe remaining questions you can take after your hands on. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll go through. I think you can proceed. Please proceed with your hands on session now. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So, hope everyone have installed the software protocol what we have discussed earlier in our Google Drive. So here, the number one is molecular docking software installation procedure, and then for afternoon session, build a QSL software installation procedure. We are given clearly. So hope everyone have installed your softwares so like this four softwares are required one is pyrex tool which we are going to run autodoc vino in this tool only and here we are going to use biovia discovery studio visualizer client version this is visualizer only you can't do docking in this you can able to uh, merge the list of compounds n number of compounds can be merged into a single file conversion of a many ligand to a single file one thing and to visualize the interaction drug interaction you can use this and then the third one is swiss pdb viewer which is used to edit the protein structure edit the protein structure uh, that i'll show it means pre processing the protein structure and then pymol this pymol is used to either you can visualize using this or to merge the or to create the drug complex structure for that we will be using these two so hope all have installed those the softwares and here in the term google drive folder 37 2020 here i have created a test molecules in that folder 1 2 3 4 5 chemical compound because uh, it, it it may take time to de uh, depends upon I'm sorry i am extremely sorry to disturb you so there okay. participants now i in the youtube i have shared the link for the google drive all of you can just go to that google drive link and you can download the material okay thank you sir go awesome. ahead please okay here i have in the folder 37 2020 here i have given the test molecules and docking protocol adm admit analysis and this build QSR protocol is for your afternoon session and QSR data will be for your afternoon session only. So here the docking protocol you can go through, you can utilize any time at any time. Whenever you, uh, wherever you want to do, you can. So first thing in a docking is to, uh, we have to create a clear hypothesis. What we are going to do, why we are going to do. Primary thing is hypothesis should be clear. I'm going to do simply you can't do uh, and use this work. You should have a clear ideology why I'm doing. So for those docking, we need two things. One is protein, another one is a ligand. So protein in the sense, which disease I'm going to work out? Why I'm going to work out? That hypothesis, that rational should be clear. So some people have asked how I can choose a protein, how I can choose the active site and all. So I'll, I'll explain a few things. So protein, how you have to choose? Protein is nothing but the target, which target we are going to find, we are going to hit with the drug. So the target, if example, cancer is the cancer pathology, if you study, pathology cells, if you study. So how we get stage by stage, it get increased example dihydrofolate reductase will be there what is the role of the enzyme so if you go through the complete literature or if you go through the complete disease uh, strategy then only you'll come to know what type of work what type of mechanism how it get multiplied how it get uh, disturbing those kind of things you can able to predict so based on those things we can able to retrieve the protein name so those protein name you can able to find out from the PDB bank that is protein data bank bank uh, protein data bank rcsb.org here I have given the rcsb and that uh, PDF file you can able to find and this extension will be always dot PDB only this extension will always will be in dot PDB 
so from this website you can able to go and download the protein what are the protein so here many scientists many researchers may have uploaded the protein so uh, how they have identified either by x-ray crystallography method or nmr method you can do a proper literature review to find out to select which one, which one you require so first you have to go to the protein data bank with any protein name so here i am going to explain with the 3u2d 3u2d is a protein So here is the protein data bank yesterday uh, our friend uh, showed clearly uh, what is protein data bank on those things. In the search term, you can enter any protein in 3U2D is that I know which I have worked on many, uh, for a longer time. So it's a Staphylococcus aureus, there is a bit ATPS, domain in complex with a small molecule inhibitor. So already it is having a complex that is co-crystallized one. So some people have asked active site. Active site in the sense only to the proper binding site or uh, means active site it will go, uh, which is more responsible for the function of a protein. That is said to be active site. That you can able to predict by these structures. What are the structures they have given that the small molecule, the inhibitor is there now. Those amino acids you can predict. That I will say how to know the, what are the amino acids it got binded. One way that is. And another way is you can use the online service such as CASTP, ActiveSite Finder, and number of artworks are available. If you upload a protein, you can able to find out what are the active sites. The active sites will be the weaker sites for them. Easily we can able to enter into the server. So I am going to download this file PDB format. Downloads PDB format. The second option will be the PDB format. You can able to see the downloads. So you can rename as a target protein or else target what other name you can you can do. So before that, I'm going to purify. I just want to know what are the active sites. So for that, I'm using a software uh, online version called as PLIP protein ligand interaction profiler. PLIP protein ligand interaction profiler. So what is the role of this website in the sense it will give a clear idea where what are the amino acids where how it got co crystallized what is the distance you can able to use this you can use in two way one is for your uh finding the active set another one is after docking post docking result analysis it will help you uh, again we'll come back so higher either two ways one is you can upload a file or else you can able to write the pdb code 3u2d and here, uh, protein data bank code will be always in four digit only, which will be alphanumeric. Four digit code in an alphanumeric. So once you run the results, you can able to download as a RST, that is text file format. One thing you can able to see here, text file will be downloaded. What type of interaction, small molecules. So here you can able to see. So here I can able to see what type of interaction protein, ligand, what are charged, what type of these things. I can able to see the 3D rotation. So here, what are the table? This table got downloaded as a text file. Can you able to see this text file? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, fine. So this text file will contain residue type. What type of residue type? What is the residue number? To which chain it got binded? So here, what is the type of interaction? Hydrogen bond uh, bonds, water bridges. I think it's not visible in uh, YouTube. So I'll show. So here, uh, these data only will be downloaded in the uh, um, text file. So which amino acid, what is the amino acid residue name, residue number. So what is the ligand atom and protein atom? This is the, these three only will be required, residue name, atom number, and distance. So hydrogen bonding interaction, what, how it happened? Water bridge, how it have happened? So this we have to keep for future use. 
one thing and then the second thing is you have to know if you know uh, if you have the structures next one is ligand now protein we have downloaded and kept ready for further process or further analysis and then next one is our ligand ligand is our drug target or uh, drug molecules or else any um, chemical structures so how we can get what are the sources of drug molecules so some people may be working on a synthetic uh, chemistry synthetic chemistry what they will do they will design based on the existing drug molecules so those people can use their structures for finding out the activity that is one way and another way is next one is plant so some people who will be working on a plant pharmacology means uh, plant structures plant extracted uh, compounds so what they will do they will go for a gcms analysis or lcms analysis what are the analysis they will get the list of compounds which are present in the particular extract so from those extract you can able to draw the structure using kendra or marvin sketch or else uh, using a uh, online sketch online sketcher is there a number of uh, sketch tools are available chem sketch and those things are so based on those tools we can able to work out we can draw the structures and other than third one so i have an ideology or hypothesis such kind of nucleus like benzium dissolved moiety is that only that moiety can be used for so and so disease so and so target what i will do i'll go to the databases like zinc database or campbell what are the database available i'll go there and i'll draw the basic nucleus and i'll download only the substructure sets so from that substructure set what i'll do i'll start to try to dock the particular things so these are the ways where we can get the source of drugs so an example i'm just going to download a, from a pub chem so pubchem database is this is for an existing uh, drug molecule so in general you can go here uh, any drug i'm just download and uh, uh, searching for a streptomycin drug so streptomycin came just click on the structure here you can click download here you can able to find out the different ways how we can able to download what are the methods we can download so based on that we will be working out one is 2d structure and 3d conformers either uh, what are the th way you want you can download so what are the conformers you are downloading if it is in 2d or 3d conformer no issues because the system once it uh, once the software starts to run it will convert as a 3d structure only so just like that i am just giving is saving the 3d structure conformer got saved so the same way you have to download what are the things you want i just given some five examples which is, which are uploaded in the other uh, drive test molecules just randomly have downloaded some five drugs and the target protein this target protein is nothing but the 3u 2d which i have showed to you people so those drugs we can able to utilize so two things we are ready one is we have got the raw data of a protein and next one is we got the raw data of our ligand structures and then next we are going to work out with the softwares as i said we have to purify the protein i have downloaded the protein as i have downloaded the protein and i have kept <clears throat> so i have renamed as a target and i have kept it so one more thing i have said you have to install a pro, uh, software called as swiss pdb protein sorry swiss pdb viewer so sir screen is not getting shared sir no no now you check sir
Right, it's fine. So once you open the Swiss PDB viewer, that uh, interface will be like this only. Either you can go to file, open PDB file, you can open, or else simply you can drag the particular protein to this. What it will show, it will give the general communication. Target some hetero atom connect request. We ignored, probably linked to the solvent molecule, number of connections ignored. It will show. So don't worry about those things. Click OK. And then next confirmation will come. Targets. Some amino acid chain, side chains atoms are missing. A reconstruction of the whole side chain will be attempted. Affected amino acids will appear in a pink color. So what are the people, how they have uploaded? It will become uh, missed. Some chains may be missed. So what it will do, this software will reconstruct according to the nature of the uh, proteins and amino acids. So if you give OK. I will create a box. Either it will show a control panel. You may get the control panel or else go to the wind in the toolbar. In that wind, you can able to see a term called as control panel. If you click wind control panel. If you click, you can able to see the control panel and another uh, panel will be open. So here in the protein, if you zoom and check, you can able to see the pink color here. So such kind of uh, reconstruction will be happen. And here, this is the uh, missing amino acid. You can able to see the color. So here that uh, scroll option will be there. You can scroll down completely down completely down because the construction after happened the down only you can able to see the other than amino acid residues you can see glu 230 229 this is an order this is an order and here again it starts with the chain a 0 81 b and mg these all are, are other than the amino acid residue we have to remove those things so click those things first one you click with the shift uh, option you can Click up to the end. So once you select it, go to build, remove selected residue. What you have to do? Go to build, remove selected residue. If you click, it will get removed. You can see the control panel. It will be of only pure protein will be available. So what you have to do? Go to file, save, current layer. So target, what I'm given, this, I have created a folder. In that folder only, I'm saving as a target underscore processed dot PDB. I'm giving so no, my protein is pure, and I'm I'm uh, I'm having my protein clearly uh, clear protein. So we can close this. And then open your uh, Discovery Studio. Discovery Studio, as I said, it is used for merging or clustering the ligand complex. So the interface will be like this. What you have to do? You have to go to file, new molecule window. Go to file, new molecule window. If you create, it, it will create a for. Uh, uh, empty space in that again go to file insert from 
go to file insert from first one is go file new molecule window next one is file insert from files so you have to uh, we have the list of ligands right there. so what are the ligands we have we can able to work out so i'm just uh, using the shift uh, option i'm selecting all the things so i have selected the list of ligands i'm just giving open so what it will do it will be shown into the display i'm going to select all and just going to select all control a or else from that to control a if you give it will uh, automatically it will get selected so once it's selected file save as uh, to save as SDF file. What I'm going to do ligand cluster. So there should not be any space while you're saving. Either you should have some other uh, uh, symbols only. Dot SDF. I have saved. So those two are ready for me. I have created a thing. So I'm just minimizing this. And then open the Pyrex software. So now I have opened the Pyrex tool. This is the tool which we are going to use for running the autodoc vena. So previously we have purified the protein. We have clustered the ligand. These two are the basic raw data which we require for our docking study. So once you are done, first you have to import the ligands. File, import. Here you can see the four different things. One is from local file, remote file, molecule from web, what are the thing. So you go to chemical table SDFL because in the by using the Discord Studio, we have saved as a SDF file only. So next. So here we have given the ligand cluster as an SDF. This file only you have to choose and open. It's ready to open. So once it is open, you can able to see from the left side and uh, the, uh, molecules, auto dog, TVK, and those things are there. My previous files will be there, so I'm just deleting those things. Don't worry. So before that, what you have to do? Once you open the pro, uh, this thing virtual screening go to edit you have to create a folder proper folder preference here workspace you can just create any folder or new folder or old folder whatever the thing you just click i just i'm giving a docking to a trial i'm just making okay okay just close the window so once you close the window where you have made as a Trial no, docking trial I have given. So in that docking trial, what it's showing, it will create a three new folders, three new folders. You can able to see the three new folders. One is ETC, ligands and macromolecules. Like that, it will be get created automatically. So once it is created, then again open a Pyrex.
thing. So Pyrex is visible now, right? So hope you all you got your materials like uh, proteins and those things and uh, what are the things required we have made ready. So next is we are going to enter into the docking procedure. So next one is we are going to incorporate the molecules. Go to files, load molecule. Not it's not load molecule. We have to go to import, import chemical table file SDF and give next. So here we are having our ligand cluster and just choosing the ligand cluster. It's incorporated. You can able to go to the next folder ligands. You can double click on this. Once it does optimize, then on day it will show. So once you are uploaded, we are going to prepare the ligand. One is minimizing the energy. So just click on the any ligand, any any of the down thing. You can able to see some uh, functions. One is minimize all, minimize selected. So first you have to give minimize all. I'm going to energy minimization process. So I'm just making ready. So you can able to see the name got changed of a and like that. So these are the energy minimized range. And again, click the uh, again, give the right click. Convert all to autodoc ligand PDBQT because autodoc will run on PDBQT file only. So it's ready now. We have created and we have minimized the energy and we are converted to autodoc ligand. So what we can able to see, how we can see in the sense, you can go to auto doc. Now you do, if you click on the ligand, you can see the ligand names with their energy, those things and all. So now we are going to import the protein, it means load molecule. So file load molecule. And this same folder it will go. So target pre-processed, that is processed one I have. I'm just giving OK. So it got incorporated. So what I have to do, I have incorporated the protein, but it's in a PDB file format. So what I have to do, I have to make as a macro molecule. Just right click, auto doc, make macro molecule if you click. So it will take some time to get converted as a macro molecule. And target processed. This is target PDB QT is ready. Now we got made both the ligands and as well as protein into the PDB QT format. PDB QT, this is the file format for running an autodoc Vena. Running an autodoc Vena. So once, once for all it is done, both are ready. Go to Vena wizard. Go to Vena wizard. And then we are going to start. So uh, once you click the start, you can able to see first it will ask add ligand and macromolecule. For that, you have to select all the ligands and then select this. Next one is you are going to use forward. So once you give forward, it will be ready to run. But before that, we have to choose which are the active set because it's showing the grid box here. You can able to know grid box only within this region only. The given drug structure will try to bind. Given drug structure will bind. So what we are going to do, we are going to predefine these are the active sites. Those are uh, what are the active sites. So in the PLIP uh, server we have seen right. So ILE, ASN, 
that is 50 when 86 like that so i'm just going to give uh, some few things that will be in macro molecule that will be in macro molecule you can plus plus like that so here uh, with the amino acid numbers it will be that so in the p lip we have seen 51, 54, 86. I'm just giving some randomly. 51, 54, 56. 51. So you can see 51. Just click, right click. So here you can able to see the two options. One is display, another one is auto doc. Display label items. So you can able to, it will get displayed. This is for rigid docking. That a protein will be in rigid in nature. If you want to make your protein also in flexible, what you have to do, give uh, right click, auto dock, flexible residues. So those residues will be flexible, it will rotate and like anything. So we are going to do only the uh, rigid docking only, one thing. 51, 55, and just giving it blindly. I'm not counting those things. Some 5 to 10 amino acids, I'm just blindly uh, giving as an active site. So, this you have to predict and you have to work out. Display label atoms. So, I have given. So, once you zoom this, you can able to see which are the amino acids got uh, show, uh, means marked, labeled. You can rotate using the mouse. So you can able to see if you zoom much more you can able to see what, which are the things you can increase the size of your box grid box you can decrease your grid box so that center ball you can able to easily move your grid box so once it is done so down you can able to see the winner set that is center x y z these are the dimensions you have to mark out how to note down clearly for your further references. This is this uh, complement. Uh, this is your grid box size. So you can able to see the changes here. If I increase or decrease, what are the thing I'm doing? So which ball I'm just moving based on that it's moving. So I'm just keeping here. I can rotate and check whether I have placed properly or not because as it is a 3d rotation we can't able to predict properly and from the one side view so we i'm just rotating all the side and just checking okay fine it got fixed so i have to note down what is the size and then i have to click forward you can able to see a window and this uh, same thing so it will start to setting up the scoring function and then analyzing the binding site so slowly it will start to do the analysis. So here you can able to see the progress of the uh, study. First compound, what is the status running? So it will keep on going. So it will say uh, take some five to 10 minutes gap. So you can able to see the window here. One is showing finished and another second compound is running.
Yes, two compounds have been finished. Third one is running. So meanwhile, I would like to answer a few questions which have been raised by our uh, friends. The last compound is running. Someone have raised a question as, what will be the explanation if the in silica results are not matching with in vitro and in vivo results? Huh, yes, I have clearly answered. So in, in silica is completely based on mathematical calculation only. So if you take a drug, what it will do, it has to pass into the many barriers which in our body. So during the passage, it may be affected by physiochemical parameters. It may be affected by some other reasons. Either it may not be uh, absorbed properly. It may not be distributed properly. So those are all the reasons for not producing the proper result even though some compounds which may be active in in vitro may fail in in vivo also so some compounds may be potent in in vivo but they won't be potent in in vitro because of the biological barriers what we have that is the thing Uh, in PLIP, the PDB we use for query, does it need to be a complex structure? Um, maybe if you want to find out the, uh, the, uh, the term itself, protein ligand interaction profiler, how the protein and ligand got interacted. So based on that only, we are going to find out. So their interaction only. So it is mandatory, it should be a complex only. Is there any criteria to select the protein structure PTB? Yes, there are a few criteria. As I said, no, you have to go through the proper literature based on the literature, so you have to work out that uh, X-ray crystallography, I am strong. Some people may love to work with the X-ray method. Some people will be allowed to work on NMR method. These two are the methods, how they will predict the protein structure in a wet lab. So it depends. Which among autodoc and autodoc vena gives more accurate results? Autodoc vena because the, there are a force fields they are using. So different force fields, according to my literature review, what I have came through, what I've been passed. So autodoc vena's results are more prominent when compared with autodoc. And more of the difference between these two, autodoc and autodoc vena. And on autodoc, at a time, you can able to bind or you can do the docking for one compound and one leg, uh, one protein at a time. But in autodoc vena, you can run n number of compounds at a time for a single protein. So this is the difference between these two. Video on PPT will be available. Yes, yes, we will be sharing the thing. So someone is asking, uh, is it is flexible docking better than rigid docking? No, I, I don't think so because uh, I, I, both have different uh, dimensions. It depends upon the, as I said, no, we have to do the thorough literature before uh, choosing the methodology. So rigid is better, I feel. Uh, I, I feel. And once you've done the rigid docking, then if you are going for molecular dynamics, mm -hmm. because docking will always be in a static mode only. But if you go further dynamic analysis, then only it will be well and good. So if I, I feel, have both NMR and extra structure, so which should I prefer on based of what? That angstrom, that their angstrom will be the 2.2, uh, 2 to 3 will be better. Within the range of 2 angstrom to 3 angstrom, it will be better to choose those things. And is energy minimization of target protein necessary? Yes, obviously. It is required. Energy minimization is required. 
because it is converting to the uh, wave nature how it will be uh, as uh, it's completely mathematical equation so it the energy should be uh, nullified it should be zero so then only it will be work, uh, it will try to incorporate get incorporated if a protein contains two chains a and b which one i should consider for docking in case of sbv yes 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 it's a valuable question and uh, not only uh, a and b so some protein may have up to four chains five chains six chains eight chains also in that way we have to find out which is active site which uh, which, which protein um, which chain is having the active site so if you are modifying that particular chain whether the activity will produce so based on that only will be working so for that we have to do a proper analysis that is active site prediction so if you predict if the chain a is having the proper amino acids proper accurate amino acids we can choose chain a if it is on chain b if it is on chain c so based on that we can able to work out it depends upon the co crystallized compounds if if it is co crystallized if it is not co crystallized we have to run an analysis that is by using cast p or active site finder based on that we will find out okay this chain is having a weaker amino acid that is the active site for us so based on that we can choose the side chain if it is a novel protein whose active sites are not clearly known how to go about this protein which are also good tar drug targets good uh, drug target that's what uh, that we can able to say you know that uh, pre, uh, if, if it is a novel protein let it be some scientists have identified a disease and they have isolated a particular uh, organ or particular thing, region and then they found this is the amino acid then we, they can go so they have to have a clear hypothesis that is previously reported a scientist might have to report wet lab okay this amino uh, this uh, protein this receptor is responsible for so and so disease so this is the re uh, reason so then you can you able to choose that particular protein simply we, uh, as we uh, said no modeling is required see we have n number of sequences but that all the sequences will have a efficiency no so for that we have to know clear hypothesis can you use chemtra for pdb qt conversion of ligands no you can't use chemtra autodoc vena and pyrex vena are same or different which one is among better for docking and other what are the algorithms the softwares both are uh, autodoc vena as as well as pyrex pyrex is a tool uh, means we we are using as a platform autodoc vena is a tool and pyrex vena both are same only there is no difference in the same algorithm same uh, force field there everything is common only but here this is easy e easy and user friendly that's why we are using this thing and if you go to autodoc vena using autodoc that is mgl tool means it has to be written uh, codes those codes will work only in uh, linux version not in windows version windows version you can give uh, means you can write a program that program will run only for one versus one one ligand versus one protein so you can't use that's why we are use, preferring pyrex vena can we use autodoc 1.5.6 after for research purpose yes you can use because uh, docking surface i just i'll do a small in, uh, thing about a uh, surface so docking surface may are available in uh, three ways one is online service online service uh, i don't prefer the those are, those results are not up to the mark i feel and then next come to the commercial versions commercial versions in the sense the software like scoringer is there gold is there uh, mo is there sibel is there discovery studio is there these are all the paid versions they have they are regularly working on if our uh, institution is ready to purchase you can utilize those things if not you want to work on individually or else you are uh, not affordable you can use pre version in that i prefer and i support as an experienced person in autodoc you can use autodoc vena a wonderful software which was by uh, done by the scripes university scripes group so they are regularly updating they are writing the course and these force fields are proper and the results are giving uh, it, uh, the results almost uh, i'm getting correlated with my in vitro and in vivo results as as far as i have done my research uh, according to my experience i am using this autodoc uh, from 2011 onwards 11 12 onwards so more than 8 years i am using this so i have good experience with this autodoc you know and autodoc so their results are prominent so you can use this and you can publish paper in this 
so you can explore more on the natural products because natural products not at all, many of the compounds have not been explored so you can try those things also so the last compound is running 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 sir i found the heteroatom should i delete uh, the connect yes you have to delete uh, the protein should be pure if a heteroatom is there that uh, that's uh, that already it got binded to the active site if you try to bind to the same thing it won't get binded it's simple if for a mobile and a mobile charger if a uh, if mobile charger is already plugged in you can't plug in another charger so the same way you have to remove everything then only you can able to use that particular protein for running a docking study someone is asking what energy minimization method should be used what will be our basis when choosing an energy minimization method energy minimization we want, we don't want to choose already it's a pre uh, means a, it's a pre uh, priorly installed so already here they have given the scores no it is it is a minimized value so this much energy they have added and minimized to null, uh, they have nullified so it is not uh, our duty to or it is not need to do Should we do virtual screening pyrexpina and then do detailed analysis using Autodoc for no need? Uh, it's not required. I I feel because Autodoc for whatever the details you want to collect, you can predict from there. So anyway, oh yeah, pyrex. Has it's completely ran and it it has given the score. You can able to see the score down one two three four five compounds. What are the things I have? Sorry, uh, for a particular compound here you can able to find a plus symbol. Insert new item or those things are there now. You can save in this row as dot csv. I'm just saving as a result dot csv. Result dot CSV. One thing. So my results are ready. So what I'm going to do? I'm just going to analyze my result. so just i have opened my result you can able to see the column like this only it will be so this is a name so these are the details it will be available one is the ligand name what type of ligand name it got binded and then these things and binding affinity third one is rmsd and rms uh, ub and lb so here this rms will be zero in the sense this is the highest docking score and here you can see the for the second compound you can see the code no 12560 this is 194649 like that it will get deferred so this is the highest score you can make a new table with a uh, compound code binding affinity or else uh, docking score or else whatever the thing you want you can able to modify second one third one is this we are going to do binding site or else uh, uh, binding amino acids you can also write distance that is hydrogen bonding distance if anything is there so like this you can able to make a 1 2 3 4 5 like that 
and what are the score here minus na minus 7 is there minus 8 is there minus 6.9 Minus seven point four. Okay, fine. So I have given four compounds only. So this thing, and out of this, you can able to make out this compound two is more potent because it has given the negative more and negative highest negative value, and this can be the first highest compound, highest uh, means a potent compound, more potent compound. So this way you can make a table and then binding site we have to predict so we have found out these are other things these are other things which will be uh, get from the doc auto doc vena so we found out the compound which compound that compound 19 c is a potent so next thing is we are going to open a pi mall window pi mall as you downloaded and kept Pactuation. My PyMal window will appear like this. So what I'm going to do is I'll minimize. And I'm going to the same folder where I have. Previously, you have created a for, uh, we are given the pathway where it has to go on generate. So docking tutorial is the pathway which I have created in that you can able to go down deep. You can see three things, three folders that is ETC, ligand and macromolecule. In that macromolecules you can able to see. I'll show. So in this folder, you can able to see three things, ligand, etc., ligands and macromolecules. Macromolecules, if you go, targets three process. So from this, you can able to find out these are the output file. Underscore out is there now. This is after docking. This other thing. So docking process is your amino acid, and this one. These are the common. So there we have found out one nine four four one nine six four nine is a potent common. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just select these two. And I'm just going to drop into uh, just drag those two. I'm just going to drag those two into the pi mall. So you can able to see the pi mall window like this. You can able to see the protein as well as the ligand. So what I'm going to do just simply file export molecule. Just listen, file, export molecule. Here three options will be the generic PDB option, multiple file. Go to multiple file, one single file, save. Into that, uh, our folder we have to show. In the docking uh, tutorial, what you have created, no. So how to save. I'm just going to save as a complex.pdp. I have to choose the file format. And I'm saving. So I have saved the PDB file. I can close this. So what I'm going to do, just I'm going to open my uh, Discovery Studio. Just I'm opening my Discovery Studio. Either I can go to File, New, or what are the thing? Or I'll just Control O. So complex is there, which I have created. I'm just opening the complex. You can able to see the complex. You can rotate anything and you can see. So now we are going to find out the 2D interaction. Just click this. You can see the uh, hierarchy. What are the hierarchy present? So complex one, complex two, ligand interaction. If you just click, these are the just click the ligand interaction and you can able to find out what are the things. 
ligand group protein group just click this ligand this is ligand interaction and down show 2d interaction will be there just click the 2d interaction your new molecule uh, new window will be open just maximize this window you can able to see what type of interactions we are having what type of example if it is green color it is conventional hydrogen bonding if it is red color given it is unfavorable means bonding any bonding is there this is salt bridge this is alkyl interaction what type of interaction they have formed so here in this display style will be there if you want to find out the active site if you want to know the score just a style you can able to change the color uh, if you want legend and this show legend in the sense what type of interaction the down you can able to see then you can able to change the font style what are the style you want you can and what is the color you want residue information what type of inter information you want interaction so here you can able to see a column called as show distance in that show distance if you click ok and apply you can able to find out the distance between the amino acid as well as the drug molecule amino acid and the drug molecule and as usual you can able to file save as image so it will ask what type of pixel ratio you want you can change according to you so this is saved this is how we will be doing the auto doc v now and then this table if you can't able if you, I'm not sad. Mm -mm. So due to technical error, I couldn't able to show the interaction image. So just again, I'll once we have framed the complex, no. Sir, again, it is not coming. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. Now it's on. Okay. 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 So file uh, open molecule. Go to complex that is complex which we have created. Open. You can able to see the window clearly. You can able to rotate here. It's a 3D rotation, 3D images. You can able to see the ligand as well as the protein. So here's the protein. So here one small box will be there. Just click over this. This is whole complex. A, B, N, on those things and all. Here let's say ligand interaction. If you click the ligand interaction, it will show the interface. And then down, you can go just see the term called a show 2d interaction just click the 2d interaction you can able to see the interaction properly so this is the result what we are having so here again what type of interaction we want to know arg 84 is having uh, of a b chain is having interaction with o group what type of interaction is conventional hydrogen? This is the legend. What type of interaction is there? And then in this display style, you can able to see the display style. You can able to modify the general uh, what type of uh, thing you want, background color if you want, you can give colorfully. Or else if you like a yellow color, you can give yellow color. It depends upon the people's mindset and uh, color. So usually I will prefer with white background only. That will be looks good. Atom. 
So how we want atom should be displayed as a stick model or in this way, ball and stick model. So you can able to modify anything, anything. Then residue, uh, residue how we want disk model. So to improvise your picturization for your publication, these things you can able to play. Like this, you can give interaction and then what type of interaction you want. So it is ultimately predefined, so no need to worry. Here the term called as show distance will be there. In that show distance, if you click and apply, you will get the distance of each and every amino acid, how it got interacted with the drug. In that way, you can able to save. Color by interaction only, or else if you want to give any specific color. So all will have such kind of interaction and favorable. What are the things? So this we won't prefer. So just close this. And this is of taking the 2D interaction. For 3D interaction and the other things, you can use the master viewer, a free version for a master viewer of Scodinger. It is available as a free viewer. You can view through for viewing the results. You can download from their website. You can have to register and you can download for 2D and 3D. You can replace that. And other than that, link plot is used. So now we have the complex. Starting itself, I have said we have a P lip software. So that P lip will be used for finding the interaction, what type of uh, things we want. So we are entering into the P lip. So we have created the complex that is our protein ligand complex we have created. That here two options will be there. Someone I have asked to repeat the protein ligand interaction profiler. So here two options are there. One is to find out which are the active sites, it means that the co chrysalis compounds to predict and to find out what are the co chrysalis uh, amino acids are there. To find out those things, this is required. Uh, and the second option is. We have done the docking and we got the results. So once we got the results, we can, we have to analyze. So for analyzing the interaction between the amino acid, which type of amino acid got interacted, what type of distance between them for that we can use. So here uh, I'm going to give the PDB file because I have the complex. I don't have a created any name. So choose file. So in the choose file, I have the complex. I'm just having uploaded. I'm just going to give run analysis. Just upload and give run analysis. That is sufficient. So here, I have got analyzed small molecules unknown. So my drug, what we have given. So here it gives a clear data. It gives a clear picturization. What type of interaction did I have created? Hydrophobic interaction, that is 1 or 2B, that is ILE amino acid, and hydrogen bonding interaction, which are the amino acids I have given this. And then the salt bridge, what are the amino acids which I have given? So this you can download as a XML format or as RST. RST is easy to work out because this will be a text format. So those text format you can able to copy paste easily and you can use for further analysis. I have given for 3D image now. So it's here uh, the le le legends are there. Protein, ligand, salt bridge, what are the thing? So those data, we can able to, I'll show the data set. So can you able to see the data set? I 
is the data set is visible yes fine so here uh, you can able to just copy paste into the same uh, folder of so the same file uh, that excel sheet what we have created no to that folder file we can able to use that previously you have created a folder So here you can able to fill those data as what we have analyzed it through Philip. So you can able to enter what uh, uh, for the compound we have run now. So what type of amino acid and their distance. You can fill and based on this, you can write your results. So hope it's clear. Again, I'll just make a small glance. I'll make a conclusion about the talking. So primary thing is, first we have to know what is the hypothesis behind our study, why we want to do this study. That is a major reason. First, you have to choose a proper protein and a proper ligand. Proper ligand, ligand it may be an, uh, unknown what are the thing maybe either it may be from a plant source maybe from animal source or from the existing database like a drug repurposing also you can utilize it so point number one so we have chosen the protein that protein should be based on the pathology or pathophysiology based on the previous literatures reported so this i mean uh, this protein or this receptor is responsible for so and so disease if you are either uh, inhibiting or activating the particular amino acid, uh, particular protein, the disease can be cured or make into proper uh, condition. You can require or else you can diagnose what are the thing it can be done. So that is the thing. And then, so based on that, you have found out a protein name. And then if you go for literature, you may get the proper ligand uh, for, uh, PDB code. That PDB code will be always four digit, which will be alphanumeric in nature. That code you can directly enter into PDB website. You can download and use one thing, or else we don't know the protein code. You can just simply you can type the protein name, that is the enzyme name or else receptor name. You can find out from that left side options. Any options will be available. That is uh, based on the different organisms will be available. That is either it may be Homo sapiens or animals model. What are the model you want? Can able to take it. You can utilize that. So uh, based on that, you can filter out and you can download the protein. So the protein, what you are downloading may be pure or maybe some amino acids will be missing. Some will be co-crystallized. So if a protein, uh, with a co -co uh, if it is a co-crystallized, it can be used for further studies. So we have to purify, we have to pre-process it. So for pre-processing, what we have done, we have dragged them into Swiss PDB viewer and then from the Swiss PD viewer, we have opened the control panel. So that control panel will be from the wind platform in that uh, wind toolbar from that wind, we have opened the control panel. That control panel go down completely. We can able to find uh, the residues which are not amino acid. So we can easily predict it because uh, the continuity of the side chain number, one, two, three, four, like that, 478, 479, like that it will be. And then it will jump to other number, one thing. Other thing is, if it is not a three digit code, proper amino acid code, it will be of other, other residues. So you have to select and delete those things. So, uh, you have to select and go to build, remove selected residue. Now it will have been completely reduced. And once it is reduced, that means we have removed, we are going to save. Go to file, save, current player, and we have saved the 
protein. Now the protein is preprocessed by number one. The data set one is ready. And then second one is ligand. So ligand, it can be either in uh, any format PDB or whatever the format you can download. You can download from a Zing database. You can download from PubCan database. What are the databases you can download? So download into a folder and then open a Discover Studio. Or in the Discover Studio file, open new molecule window. So new molecule window will be open. And then in that file, import. From that import, uh, what you have to do? You have to from chemical data file, chemical database, SDF, uh, SDF file. So that you have to select all. And you have to save. Once you have the what you have to do, uh, you have to do you, you have to select all and save as a single SDF file. That it can be a ligand cluster or whatever the name you want to, you can give complex or, or anything. So once it is saved, then open the Pyrex folder, Pyrex software. So Pyrex software is containing the Vena. Pyrex is a platform which is used to run the Autodoc Vena tool. So once you open the Vena, you have to edit the preferences in that edit preferences you have to choose a folder either in it may be a trial folder or whatever the thing you name you can keep so once you open that if you give just close it again if you open the same folder you can see the three different folder names one is etc macromolecule and ligand like that you can see the three folder and then once the three folder is ready pyrex you have to import uh, load the file molecules you have to load the uh, first you have to import uh, import uh, uh, first thing is you have to import then only you have to load the protein so you have to go to the option which is given in the thing uh, which is given in the vena wizard import from the file you have to click the chemical table file sgf you have to click so once you have done that, your uh, ligands will be incorporated. In that down, you can able to see the uh, uh, ligand name. So right click and you minimize all the ligands because we have to energy minimize it. So once it is minimized, energy is minimized, then we have to work it out. Then we are uh, then we are going to work on that. Once it is energy minimized, then we are going to again right click select uh, uh, convert them to pdb qt file format so once it is got pdb qt conversion it is fine and then load molecule file load molecule we are going to upload the uh, molecule so load molecule what you are going to do you have to load, load the pre-processed molecule and then once the lo uh, pre-processed load molecule is there you can go to the molecule name molecule and then from that molecule you can able to choose auto dog make as a macro molecule so that it will get converted as a pdb file that is pdb qt file format it will get converted so once it is done down you can able to see the vena wizard will be available in that vena wizard you have to click the forward but uh, forward option once it is start, uh, you have to start. Once it is started, you can able to choose the ligands. Choose the ligands, what are the names we are given. And then once it is chosen, once it is selected, you have to select all the thing. And then in that same thing, macromolecule window, target pre-process will be the PDBT. You have to select both the thing. And then click forward. So if you want to give if you want to do blind docking, you can just forward, forward and go. But if you want to do a proper uh, ligand, uh, means site specific docking, you can choose the from the macro molecule. You have to click and you have to find out which is the active molecule, which are the active molecule. So based on the active molecule, you can display label atoms. Or if you want to do a flexible docking, you can choose the second option auto dock and flexible this thing. So your grid box will be formed like this. So you can able to drag the box. You can increase the box by choosing the where we have given the display. What type of, because we have selected certain amnesty you now to cover those things, we are giving those things. And you have to um, note down the results, note down the results of the shape. That is a, what type of dimension you are used for grid box. And then click start process. Once it started, 
once it got ended it will be like this it will run slowly it will run once it is ended it will show the uh, box here what is the score how much it got those things you can click the third option uh, fourth option save as comma separated value that is csv file that is excel sheet file you can download and save for your making table so once it is done once it is done then we have to create a protein ligand complex for protein ligand complex so this process this processed ligand and the processed protein will be available in the folder called as in the docking workspace macromolecules will be there in the target pre process in the target pre process we will be having the uh, folder within that folder all the materials will be available that is target pre process as well as the amino acid sequence I means uh, ligands so which are which have been out previously above one is will be in and this will be the out so we have to select these two drag them to pd uh, pymol once it is open you can just directly go to export molecule in the third option will be the multi file in that click one single file click save in that save option you can able to choose the pdb file format option and then you can save it so protein ligand complex what are the name you want to you can give so that you have to drag into drag into bio discovery or else open with bio discovery studio so once it is open you can uh, use this options here so here uh, you can able to choose which is a uh, ligand interaction you can click and then click the show 2d diagram from the 2d diagram you can able to modify the images according to your wish and then you can use the same complex uh, for plip where you will get the details of the binding amino acid sequences with their uh, distance that you can make as a table so here the table making one is the compound name or compound code what are the thing you want you can give second one is binding affinity third one is binding affinity binding score binding site or binding amino acid or, and then last one is distance so like this you can make a table so like this you can make a table compound binding affinity binding site distance 1 2 3 4 5 or uh, what are the number you have you can able to make out at any numbers according to the compounds or ligands what you have chosen so what are the scores you got you can able to enter whatever the distance so here you have to write amino acid one next what is the distance or else you can make out any any way so this how we will be working for a auto dog veena using pyrex tool hope it will be clear and then a simple tool what i'm going to show is pkcsm for admit property so i have shared the link uh, in the same folder i think you know in that uh, molecular docking software installation i don't know yeah here I admit analysis profile so here i have just it's a two pages only simple protocol so for pkcsm we are using for adamt property absorption distribution so screen is not visible sir screen is not visible okay 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 one minute one minute i'll give the screen share yes 
So here, this is a website called as Pharmacokinetic Property Prediction. That is uh, to know the aid admit analysis. So this is the very simple step, very simple procedure. What we are going to do? We are going to convert the structure. What are the chemical structure we are having? That structure we are going to convert as a smileys, smiles format. Here we are having no smiles format. That format only it will access. So upload your smiley files. We, uh, we don't have. So what we are going to do? We are going to convert. For that, two websites are available. One is PubCom is uh, already having. Just you have to go to this file, import or uh, choose file is there. No, you have to click this choose file. So I have the compound. This is potent. I have to test what is the toxicity level. What is the level? So I have selected the name came done. Import. And here export. Export as my list I have to give. So I have got the download address as my list. Or else if it is confusing, you can use the another folder, uh, another software called as uh, from NIHM. It is a cactus website. That is NCA and NIH government. Oh. It's not working. Money only is. Yes. So here, this is the National Cancer Institute. What you are to going to do? Just choose the file. Just click translate. Here your uh, smileys will come. So just select the smileys, copy. And just paste into the provided smiley string. Just paste. So here you can able to select individually if you want to work out for uh, only for absorption, only for distribution, or only for metabolism, or only for excretion, or only you want to do the toxicity study also you can do. Or else here the last option is admit analysis. If you click a single, so it will cover all the five properties. So I just give the click. I'm waiting for the result. It will take some time to generate the result. Yes, I got my results. So here, this is the drug structure and left side is a molecular property. This is molecular depiction and molecular properties. What is its molecular weight? What is its lag P? How many rotatable bands? How many acceptor bands? How many donor bands? What is the surface area of a particular compound that you have been given? So here, and then right side, if you see the property, model name, predicted value, and what is the unit. So it will be given clearly. So here you can able to see the first one, two, three, four. Some properties are absorption property. So few properties. What is the water solubility value? What is the predicted unit? What is its means predicted value? What is its unit? Caco permeability, intestinal absorption, skin permeability, glycoprotein substrate. So these are the properties which you have been predicted. So this you have to, it's running here. One by one, one by one, it's, it is giving the result. So most probably you have to enter into the toxicity. Whether it is an MS toxicity, yes. Maximum tolerated dose, 0.622 
log of uh, milligram per kg per day. So HERG2 inhibitor, yes. So this you have to compare and this will change uh, from a drug to drug, from a disease to disease, because at what type of region you want to work or some maybe this what solubility will be less because some drug, uh, if it want to be reaching to the brain, it should be of more lipophilic in nature. That time the value will differ. So they won't give the proper value. You have to compare with the already existing standard drug. Existing standard drug for a particular disease. So that's all about this prediction. So it have given clear data. So you can just you have to copy and paste in a word file and you can able to create a tables accordingly how we want. So this is all about the docking studies and admit analysis and analysis prediction. So now we'll move on to the question section. Sir, TPK, sir. Sir, TPK, sir. Okay, we'll move to the question section. Can you please say the scoring matrix? Scoring matrix has uh, explained clearly that it's based on the hydrogen bond interaction, hydrophobic interaction, they're steric complementary. Based on that only, the scoring will be calculated. It is based on the wave equation. That equation um, will uh, automatically, it will be calculated and we'll get the result as in a negative score only. Uh, yes, this video we will edit and we will send without any lag or uh, any disturbances. The continuity will make it and we will, we will upload soon, very soon. Without any how long will it take, sir? Finish, sir. My session finished. You have to ask the question and answer. Question answers. Okay. So, now, how, how do we determine the active site in autodoc vena? Autodoc vena, how we are, you know, we can't determine the active site in autodoc vena. We have to run the autodoc, not autodoc, as I said, no, cast P, uh, active site finder, like that, some websites are available. From there only, we can able to predict the active site. That predict uh, active site only we can give as a X, Y, Z dimension. What software is used for metal toxicity, they asked? Metal toxicity? For what, which software is used for metal toxicity? Toxicity. Toxicity. The metal toxicity, I'm not sure about those things. We are not working on inorganic complexes. We are working on organic only. For metal docking, we, uh, they can use auto dock, not a direct auto dock. There are some codes where this metal complexes will get neutralized, means that energy will be minimized and then they will run because some in, uh, inorganic chemists may work on that. So for them, it will be helpful. Auto dock will be helpful. Should we do ADMA analysis before or after docking studies? That it depends. That it depends upon the person's mind. Anyway, it, 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 uh, it, it's a type of uh, filtering the compound. Even though if, it, if the compound is giving good score, if it is toxic in nature, we can't use no. So better. even if it is a good compound, we get a good compound mm. in the docking. So ADMA it is, it is, it is not passed. Then how do we like uh, proceed? No, we have to modify it. That is like a, it's like a lead identification. We can able to modify it if, if there is a functional group, let it be a hydroxy group is there. So that hydroxy group and as a bioisoester, we can replace with the chloro 
or else NH2, such kind of things we can modify, modify, and we can able to get a compound with a good score, and then it can be a uh, with a less toxicity or without toxicity. Is that ligand will get change in its chemical properties after attaching with the? Target? No way, no way, no way. It won't get a change. It is of a. It doesn't have an. Uh, what it will do? It will get just rotate its body shape. That's all. Its molecular property nature will never ever, never ever change. On what basis we are changing grid box dimension? Does the target protein completely inside the grid box? As I said, now if you want to work on the particular uh, active sites, then we have to choose the grid box into the particular uh, position. I just uh, showed how to drag and uh, drag in and out, so you can choose the proper active sites and then just place the grid box there. So it will be easy. I think some are most redundant questions again. Uh -huh. Like same thing I've asked about active site doc. Uh, sir, I found HET atom. Should I delete connect details? Yes, yes, I have answered in that in between. In yeah. between, I have answered. The same thing. The most all like well, running Pyrex more than 10, 20 compounds. The program itself automatically going to close. So to debug this, how to debug maybe? Come again, sir. While running Pyrex more than 10 to 20 compounds, the program itself automatically going to close. Yeah, that error is there. It depends upon, as I said, no, the configuration we require high configuration sometimes. Yeah. It depends upon the system configuration. So many. So maybe they are like uh, here and there they have found a problem of performing analysis. I think maybe uh -huh. we can maybe they can redo it and. Uh, Is there any software to identify active site of protein? You answered that is CAS. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, I answered all the questions there. Uh, what Can you, you compare the interaction results of two different docking software? It, it, it differs between uh, software to software. The reason behind that is the, what force field they are using. Yes. What type of parameters they are using, include, uh, they are uh, using for uh, calculating the uh, binding score. Because uh, if example, if, if you take a Scodinger itself, Scodinger is having a three different ways. One is HTS prediction, uh, standard precision, and extra precision. So these three scores will get different because they, what type of uh, measurement they are taking? Either uh, only the major components like hydrogen bonding, hydrophobic interaction they are taking, or else much more deeper, even a, single, a small, small parameter also they are calculating. It depends. Yeah. 